everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and this is video number two in my DIY wedding dress series. So my first video, which I'll put a link for in the description box below, was about phase number one, or stage one, which was collecting all of my inspiration for the design for my dress. So once I'd done that, done all my Pinterest and my mood boards and trying dresses on, I was able to move on to stage two, which was actually starting to pull the design ideas together. So to give you context, I got married in April this year, 2019, and I started actually putting pencil to paper for the design in December, 2018. So just like five months before. <laughs> and essentially in this video, um, I wanted to talk you through some of the initial designs I made, some of the initial ideas I had, um, and some of the pattern ideas that I had for how I could make these design ideas come to life. So I'm going to put my sketchbook out and I'm going to work out a way to get the camera pointing at my sketchbook. I'll be right back. So this is my trusty bullet journal. This is actually the very first bullet journal I ever had and I've now moved on to my second bullet journal. But this is where I did all of the sketching for my wedding dress. So this is the very first sketch that I did and you can see that it's got a slash neckline, sort of low enough to expose the collarbones some fitted sort of three quarter length sleeves, a panel down the middle, because if you remember, I really like, from my previous video that is, if you remember, I really liked a certain design that had a panel down the middle of different fabric. Let me just find that picture for you now, like this. That was my main inspiration for this particular design with the panel down the front there. And then I really like the idea of some kind of detailing or a belt around the middle and then a full skirt of some kind. As you can see I've noted things like sparkles, pleats potentially, brocade question mark, panel, um, potentially plain fabric at the top and like a brocade more detailed fabric at the bottom and three quarter length sleeves. So that's kind of the very first idea I was playing around with. Then I went on to do some more sketches. Actually I'll leave that in here because it's going to... That page is going to ping up otherwise. So I did just a whole bunch of more sketches, sketching out my ideas for what the front of the dress could look like, what the back of the dress could look like. This one I was sort of inspired by or sought inspiration from the By Hand London Elise Selects bodice. I thought that I could use the long sleeved version. Um, it's got the lovely princess seams at the front. Um, I could sort of use that the lovely neckline and maybe even accentuate kind of a slash neckline by hacking the pattern a little bit. Again, cinched in at the waist and potentially like plain fabric at the top, a brocade or jacquard fabric at the bottom for a full skirt. Looking at the back, I thought again I could probably, the By Hand London Elise Selects bodice already has quite a lovely sort of V shape at the back. I thought I could potentially accentuate it down a bit further. Um, yeah, and sort of same thing again, this is sort of the potential back version to this front, and I thought that could be a really elegant combination with the slash showing a little bit of collarbone and then slightly lower V at the back. Moving across to this side, um, I don't have any particular patterns in mind for these two sketches, but again, these are more ideas for the back because although I knew I could achieve this shape with the Elise Selects bodice, I wanted potentially a more dramatic shape at the back. This shape is a shape I really liked, based on inspiration images like this one, and also this one. Um, so yeah, these sort of necklines I really, really liked and thought that I could try and replicate. Um, I also really liked another image, and um, this image was one I found really inspiring, of potentially just essentially turning the back into two sort of strips of fabric and having um, I, again, am really into the long sleeves, as you can tell. All these designs have long sleeves on them. Um, but I thought I could actually have an even more dramatic open back and actually have these panels just go straight into the waistband, like this example here. So that was another thought process I was going down with the back. And all the while I was kind of thinking, well, how am I going to achieve this? How am I going to be able to fit it properly so that it fits me nicely? Um, yeah, and have it as a sturdy, stable, wearable garment that's not going to fall off or anything on the day because that would be a disaster. Then I moved on to the final sort of two sketches that I did in this round of ideas um, and this one you can see is very very similar to the initial sketch that I did that was inspired by sort of this sort of design at the front with the panel 
but this time I combined it with a high neck. I was very keen on a high neck and I had several images from my mood board that sort of showed a higher neck um, and I really really like the idea of that, I think it's really elegant um, and really classy so here I've got um, a high neck, potentially a ruffled high neck I like the idea of again the panel down the middle, potentially a plain fabric at the top with a more detailed fabric at the bottom again cinched in at the waist with some kind of belt detail and a fuller skirt in the back I kind of thought that I could have um, it done up at the top because obviously there'd need to be something to hold the high neck together um, and then have some kind of sort of really large cutout detail and this was actually inspired by a dress that I'd worn before it was a dress that I wore um, on New Year's Eve a few years ago and it was actually like 24 hours after Alex and I got engaged so it was a really special evening we kind of ended up celebrating New Year as well as um, our engagement which was amazing but this dress is, I bought it from ASOS from a brand called Chi Chi London and I just really like how it's got the high neck detail um, but it clips together at the back of your neck and then has these panels sort of forming the back section but the majority of the back is exposed so I thought I could potentially hack a pattern to do something similar to that to give me a high neck at the front but also a really lovely open back at this stage, oh this is Alex by the way, <laughs> if any of you haven't seen him before, my now husband um, so at this point I'd kind of really figured out, as you can see from these sketches, that I wanted sort of knee length or just to the knee, just over the knee, long fitted sleeves cinched in at the waist, but the main questions were um, what kind of neckline do I have? Do I have a high neckline, a slash neckline? what kind of back can I achieve? Can I achieve a really dramatic low back or would I have to go for something a bit more conservative from a fit and structural perspective? And also at this stage I hadn't really considered what kind of skirt it would be. I was thinking maybe box pleats, maybe just a gathered skirt, maybe a circle skirt, um, and these are all things that I then needed to test out in the twirling phase. As I figured out from stage one, collecting inspiration and trying on dresses, I'd figured out that I really do need to add kind of volume at my hips to balance out my shoulders um, and then the style of, well this meant that the style of skirt would really sort of, getting the skirt in combination with the fabric right was re would be really important because if I wanted more of a flowy shape I needed to make sure that I had enough layers to the fabric and enough that even with a more floaty shape that it still gave me volume but of course I knew I could also maybe go for box pleats and something really structured like a brocade and then I'd instantly have shape and volume without necessarily needing loads and loads of layers of more floaty fabrics. So that's kind of where I got to in my initial design stage and then I I couldn't really do much more at this point without just starting to test them out I needed to test this like these ideas would I be able to fit sleeves nicely enough to have some lovely slim sleeves would I be able to achieve an open back that fits well enough that it wouldn't gape and um, and yeah and would stay up at the shoulders and wouldn't you know fall off these were the challenges that I then needed to iron out by actually starting to make some twirls so that's what I will tell you about in the next video. Thanks ever so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you'd like to see my next video or more of my videos. My next one in this series is going to be stage three of Mission DIY Wedding Dress and that is the twirling phase. So that's when I'll actually start showing you my twirls, my test versions and tell you how on earth they went. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.